says there's not much to see in the late winter garden? Today we visit a 300 acre masterpiece and learn how you can have color even during the most difficult seasons. You won't want to miss it, so stay tuned as we garden smart from Georgia. For years, Garden Smart has been traveling the country visiting beautiful gardens. It's very rare that we find a new garden, certainly not one as impressive as Gibbs Gardens. Jim Gibbs traveled the world viewing gardens of every style and spent six long years looking for just the perfect location. What he wanted was land with a rolling topography and plenty of water to build streams and ponds and waterfalls on. What he found were 292 perfect acres. On that acreage, he built 16 gardens three water features, and a manor house. It's very important to Jim that he found just the right plant. He wanted plants that were unique and looked mature. He would even go so far as to knock on people's doors and ask them if he could buy the plants that were in their front yard. Surprisingly, in most cases, they sold him the plant. Jim Gibbs was also the founder of Gibbs Landscape Company in Atlanta, and he's had a lifelong passion for plants that he now shares with us in Gibbs Gardens. In his own words, Passing down seeds and plants from generation to generation provides the kind of love that only a gardener understands. Jim, why did you select this site to build your garden on? In 1973, I knew that I wanted to build a world-class garden, but I knew that first of all, I had to come up with a criteria for searching for land. I knew that I needed an abundance of water. I needed a mature forest setting. I wanted to make sure that we had rolling topography to feature all the plant material. I wanted to make sure that we were located between 400 and 575. So I started searching for land in 1980. I found this beautiful piece of property. There was no question I had all the water I needed, hundreds of springs everywhere. Had a stream that flowed through the valley and I would be able to create all of the ponds, 32 ponds that I wanted to build, the bridge crossings, and the waterfalls. You probably have as much experience planting daffodils as anyone I've ever spoken with. What can you tell us about planting depth and if there's any kind of special soil preparation we ought to do prior to planting bulbs? The depth for a daffodil is always determined by the size of the bulb. If you have, for example, a two inch bulb, you plant three times, so that would be six inches. So it's three times the size of the bulb. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you dig your hole deep enough. And once you do that, you don't have to worry too much though because daffodils have tactical roots. A lot of people don't understand this. If you plant it a little too shallow, and I was worried about this because one year we planted too many bulbs and they were too shallow. Found out that they have tactical roots and the root system will pull the bulb to the desired depth it needs for your particular zone. So the next year, it's gonna be fine. So you don't have to worry much about it. Daffodils are just so easy because the deer don't eat the daffodils. They're toxic to deer. Uh, they're easy to grow. They repeat themselves every year. After about 10 years, you may have to divide them then, but uh, there's just no problem with the daffodil. That's why everybody loves daffodils and everybody has daffodils. <laughs> 